Welcome to the program. Our guest today is a frontline aspirant for the office of the National Chairman of the All Progressives Congress, Senator Mohamed Sani Musa. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you very much. Yes, you have submitted your nomination and expression of interest form. And after that submission, you spoke to the press and you asked for a generational shift in the leadership trajectory. Help us put this in perspective. What exactly do you mean? Uh, thank you very much, Femi. Uh, APC today is uh, the largest party in Nigeria and in Africa. And uh, if you look at uh, the population that constitutes uh, the membership, you will realize that uh, majority are uh, those in their youth, youthful age. And uh, youthful age is the productive age. That means the party is very lucky to have that number. And uh, if any organization will have such a number with a productive age group, uh, it stands a better chance and opportunity to be able to change whatever uh, narrative in terms of running its administration, especially when it's governing. And um, uh, when you look at the, the leadership trajectory today, you will realize that the ecosystem has changed. And in as much as it has changed, it is more digitalized now. It is focused on technology. It is focused on uh, 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 skills more. And if you look at the number of youths that have formed, I mean, have registered to be members of uh, APC, they constitute close to about 80%. So if we are talking about leadership in the APC, for the party to earn the confidence of these youths, they must be seen or they must see that something is done in terms of how their participation is. So in so doing, I believe that by the time I become the leader of the party, I will be able to be adaptive to a participatory kind of uh, work style, uh, which will usher in uh, a, a new for these youths, and uh, they will have a sense of belonging. And this is what this country needs today. Uh, I mean, you cannot get us back to those age, I mean, those days that uh, uh, we, we, we stand not to believe in, in a change. This is a party of change, and we believe that we can adapt a new system of leadership that will be able to be transformational, to give, especially now that we are going on a transition election. We need some kind of energetic people. We need people with kind of vision. We need people that will be able to meet up with the aspiration of their, their, their age groups, their generation. And then look at the country today. To tr uh, transverse Nigeria today, with our diversity to be able to get everyone to, to queue in, there is no way we'll do away with the use of technology. And majority of these people that are so into it are the youths. And that is why I feel the leadership of the party now should look at it very, very carefully and see how they can embrace the youth and create that generational shift. If you look at the composition of political parties today, it's like an association of maybe politicians coming together for the sake of contesting and winning election. How would you uh, strengthen that institution called political party to ensure that it's made up of ideals, philosophies, and programs and policies that would be for the benefit of Nigerians, just be not only winning elections and, um, and, and, and ruling. As long as the kind of leadership we're having remains, there is no way that can change. The status quo has become, you see, when people are too conservative, believing in what they have, and they don't believe that there can be change, it's a difficult situation. But today, if we so much believe that we can change the trajectory, 
and allow what is going on today elsewhere. The world is a global village. When you're talking about uh, political parties, it's a, it's a coming together of different politicians and everything. Politicians, even the politicians have skills. We can be creative in our leadership styles. And we make the differences. And we create an ideology out of it. But if we, we remain the status quo, whereby we allow our own selfish interest to override national interest, to override patriotism, then there's a problem. i give you a simple example. For me to think of leaving the Senate, I strongly believe that I'm doing kind of sacrifice. Because at my age, I believe that I can be a bridge to create that ideology between our youths, youthful generation, and the old generation. You cannot tell me the politics or the political parties, the way they operate in the first, second, and the third republic is the same as what we are doing now. You cannot tell me they are different. In the days of MPN, there is supremacy of the party. There's, there's party leadership. But the whole narrative has changed now. And before we can get it right, we must be able to articulate the kind of style we are going to adopt as leaders in order to move forward. Okay, we are talking about quite a number of programs, quite a number of initiatives that this administration have done. Unfortunately, we are not taking advantage of all those good things that we have done to tell the whole world what creates that is because, I'm sorry I have to say it, the vision is not there. An administration like this that have done so much to transform the country, we have in seven years, what an administration of 16 years was not able to have. But we, were not able, we are not able to sell it out. I will give you a simple example now. The infrastructural development going on in this country. How I wish APC as a party, because it's an institution of its own, as a party will now call for APC midterm or APC second quarter conference or APC first time conference. In that conference, what you do, you gather all the, pol all the stakeholders. Because if the executive is doing a retreat today, it's only meant for those executive ministers, head of parasitos, and a few people that will be invited. But if you're doing, if the party is doing a stakeholder conference, we can do four stakeholders conference in a year, which has nothing to do with the next meeting. It has nothing to do with the NWC meeting or yeah. anything. Yeah. And it's going to be a regular stuff. You will see that the party administration will have a sense of uh, 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 belonging within the administration, within the governors. And during these party conferences, we will elaborate all the good things that we have done from smaller constituencies to the big, to national, state, local government. We will, show, we will showcase everything we have done because it will be a forum where everyone will be able to come and speak and give those things that we have been able to achieve within this period that has passed. And in the next quarter, we do the same thing. The party will create something that we call peer review. What I can see in Kaduna, if it's not there in Niger, I will go and see why is it not in Niger? Why can't we copy and bring to Niger? 
or if there is some agricultural development that has sprung up in Niger State, I will say, oh, we don't have it in Gombe. Let me see how Gombe can come to Niger and tap it, and we interchange development. And in so doing, our party will remain strong. Our party will remain a party to beat. I don't, I don't want to sit here and elaborate so much on my plans, but I will tell you that in the last two years, I have studied and I've worked so much to see how we can reposition not just APC today in Nigeria, but our political development completely. And we cannot do that without having strong political parties that will operate like institutions, not operating as a base for certain individuals. No. Okay, let me write on the back of that because you talked about party supremacy, strong institutions and all of that. That is non-existent as we speak. What we have are strong individuals, big men in the party, not a big institution like um, the APC and other political parties. To be the leader of the APC, you must be tough. Are you, uh, do you see yourself as that tough man that can lead the APC? It's not about me being tough. It's about the framework I work with. We have a party constitution. We have guidelines. And when you build strong individuals and not strong institutions, then you can never have cohesiveness. That means you'll be operating on the basis of disparity. But if you build an institution, you are building it to evolve and they will exist even after office. The most you can stay in office is first time, second time, that's eight years. We are talking about something you will put down. That generations to come, will, why are you talking about the United States of America having 200 years of democracy? Why are you talking about a constitutional amendment in America? You, it's, it takes quite a long time and very tedious to do. Why? Because they want the institution to be very strong. Why can't we make our institution strong? Why should we be making individuals strong? What if that individual is no more? Who stands to hold the parties? Who stands to hold the institution? So we must make our political parties to operate as institutions. And that will give those in government eh? the, 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 uh, that will give those in government the in, 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 in incentive to be able to operate very well. What are those incentives? If a party is an institution, they have research and strategy they should have a research and strategy department in the office. These are people that will work serious, uh, 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 I mean, seriously going down to the grassroots, going elsewhere to see how it's been operated elsewhere, putting a packet, putting a, 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 a blueprint for the party, and from there the party will be able to create a kind of policy that will assist those in government on how they operate. Every party is supposed to have a manifesto. Is today manifestos working in this country? So. Is manifesto working with political parties? Mani um, most of these uh, manifestos are supposed to be the handwork of the political party. There should be a think tank in that party that will be able to bring the sense. When people tell me about experience, party of party administration, what experience is more than being, having experience in a corporate organization where the boardroom politics is even more because in boardroom, you see skilled people. You see people that are very qualified. You see people that are there to defend their certain interests. And you see people that are trying as much as possible not to allow certain interests to conflict with the interests of with our corporate organization. That is what we should try to make our political parties to be. And this is one of those reasons I feel I can. And when you are talking about it needs somebody very strong, it's not about energy. It's not about your face. It's not about your age. It is about the kind of intellect you'll be able to have 
in your decision making. There's nothing better than having a leader that will be very decisive. And once you have a leader that is very decisive, you see that you, see that you don't have to talk too much for things to happen. And in a working environment where everybody is acquainted with his responsibilities, like the National Working Committee, if everyone knows his responsibilities, and we put patriotism first, I'm telling you there's nothing that will make our, institu our parties not becoming institutions. The single center, uh, there are about 10 aspirants now for the office of the national chairman. You are one of the leading aspirants. Some people even say you are in poor position. But there's this um, rumored or say, purported endorsement of um, a particular candidate uh, by Mr. President. Where does this leave you and um, the rest of other aspirants? Because it appears as if that level playing ground would not be created. I don't want to see myself as having an advantage. I want to be rated on the basis of what I can afford to bring new. I want to be rated as that person that will be able to bring the transitional change we, are, we require in this party. Mr. President is our leader today. He's been respected globally. He's very transparent, very honest. Today, whether we like it or not, if anyone likes it or not, he has legacies that he's going to leave. And those legacies cannot be apportioned to any group than the APC, a party that produced him. What does it take to have an ideology? He has created already that platform. He has created a framework for us to be able to, I mean, the foundation has been laid by him. What do we supposed to do? To have a party which is an institution that will groom those people that will be able to carry on with those legacies. When you are asking me what are those legacies, I can tell you. When you're talking about infrastructural development, managing of the economy, even in the face of hardship, which was created by certain uncertainties in, this, in the world, which are beyond everyone's control, but still being able to manage those things, facing the challenges of security, he's still being able to manage the affairs of this country. He needs, when he's bequeathing, some other leaders that will be able to carry the trajectory of that leadership ahead. And as such, when you're talking about being at advantageous stage in this race, I can see myself as one because it is what I am bringing to APC. Not what I'm taking from APC, but what I am going to bring to APC. I want to make APC a model. The Conservative Party in the United, uh, United Kingdom, under the leadership of Boris Johnson, just, was it yesterday or the before yesterday, they had the Conservative Spring Conference. If you have taken your time to watch, you will see what I'm talking about here. You will see what, when you make a party, a political party, an institution, you will see what it becomes. It will be a ground or an organ that not one single individual that is so powerful will be able to make decisions that even if 100 million does not agree with it. But the good thing about this country is that, especially in APC, we respect our leadership. And we believe that Mr. President will anchor a transition in the party that he will be able to go on retirement after leaving office and be very proud of. Some people are already saying Mr. President has endorsed a particular candidate. Don't you think it will affect the chances of um, your chance and the chances of others who are supposed to enjoy a fair contest? You cannot deny Mr. President of having 
preference on anyone. Mr. President can have preference on any one of us. But that does not foreclose the possibility of Mr. President agreeing to certain statutes that will make, because they might be superior to his own aspiration as to liking one person. You can't deny it. But all of us that are contesting this election are being loved and liked by Mr. President. We are all obedient servants of Mr. President. We are all die-hard followers of Mr. President. If you knew what I have done in 2015, I was not buying for any office. What I have gone through, you have seen my picture. I have shown you my picture the day I was released from detention. Was I doing it for any purpose? At that period, I was doing it out of patriotism. Out of the fact that I know this is the only president that will be able to come with the exigency of what we had that time. He's the only person that will make this country better. And he did. Crying out loud, we must give this credit to him. So when people are saying somebody has been endorsed, how can we foreclose that? Mr. President is the leader of the party. If the Mr. President invites all of us and sat with us, we are all his children. This is my opinion. My kids, my children, this is my opinion. And we will say, Dad, this is a good opinion. This is your own opinion. But we have some reasons to give you why we came out to contest. But we cannot go against what you want. The decision finally is yours. And he may eventually come to terms with your own opinion. Exactly. Because the exigency of today is quite different. We have two months to primaries. We had congresses that had created a lot of disparities, dissolution, and conflicts everywhere. Most states, there was a reconciliation committee. Are you telling me that today those conflicts are over? Are you telling me that every state has been reconciled? How would you make them go away? Because you just have to hold the national convention and the, move the, on. No, no, no. We don't have to reconcile everything now. We can do the convention. But I can tell you it, it, will, it will take a leader that can be very decisive, a leader that can know what exactly equity and fairness is to be able to give APC a direction. And that is me. I have that requisite knowledge of how we'll be able to tackle these differences and mend so that we'll be able to win the election. All right, thank you very much for your time and wish you the very best as you continue your journey to lead the All Progressives Congress. Thank, thank you very much. much. Thank you, sir.